On today's episode, we're going to capture the four elements of winter in Colorado. Steam, earth, ice, and snow. And to do that, we'll outfit our 2002 996C4S with a light safari kit and drive it a thousand miles to the four corners of the Colorado Rockies, all in an effort to prove that you don't need an SUV to survive the Colorado winter. The 996's story actually started back in the air-cooled lineage. This is a 1980 911 SC. They are very easily discernible. You can always tell that that's a 911. With the 996, it revolutionized into a modern car. And with that, you saw these lines that were less defined. You saw plastic interiors that succumbed to Porsche's brink with bankruptcy in the late 90s. And the worst transgression of all was you saw headlights that looked like this. By the 996.2, we got eggs that were fried instead of runny and just a little bit less offensive. By the 997, Porsche had fixed this. We got headlights that were round. We got fenders that were pronounced. The build quality was better. They had really recovered from the brink of bankruptcy and built a proper 911. But everything that makes the 996 terrible is what makes it so fantastic. Because it's not perfect, does not command the values. And that means when it comes time to throw some skis on the roof, you don't sacrifice the experience of having that in a 911. With the C4S, you got all of the fancy bits that you got with the turbo, but you didn't have to pay the turbo price tag. This particular car, and what makes it different than the typical 911 C4S, is inside it's got the special Boxster red interior. It stands out from all of the silver on black, silver on gray 911s. Being in here, it's like being in a kangaroo's pouch. <laughs> what we're gonna do today is we're gonna outfit it with some very light safari kit, but we're just gonna leave it like it is. We're not gonna lift it. We're gonna put winter wheels and snow tires on it, a roof rack, some rally lights, and then we're gonna go chase one of the strongest winter storms we've had this year. 5.30 exactly. <laughs> we're gonna hack the clock and try to do this in an hour. When do we start? Right now, go. Get to it. I know this isn't a real safari, so before we go hating, we have not lifted it, we're not going overlanding, but we are gonna shred some snow. 6.25, 55 minutes. Quick walk around of what we've done. The most important thing is wheels and tires. So OZ wheels, Bridgestone Blizzak tires. I got some Yak trucks. I actually use these a fair amount when you get stuck. On the other side, we got a shovel. We got a CB. If we do need assistance and we're on the pass in the middle of the night, who's out driving on I-70? It's truckers. We got the KC lights. We just took the stock tow hook, added a strap. And the one thing that you can't see that I've done is I've clear filmed the entire leading edge. So that'll preserve the integrity of the car. This rack's mounted to the factory crossbars and it came with another C4S we had. It's good to put it to use finally. Nine thirty-one, ETA, one a.m. <laughs> Heading into the storm, and we have everything in the kitchen sink in here. Why does everybody drive SUVs? <laughs> so low beams, high beams, a collapsed sun. <laughs> <laughs> I think the gas mileage with all this shit hanging off of it's probably hovering near single digits. Steamboat Springs is the northernmost town in our quest for the elements and home of the rarest, steam. It's a geothermal hotspot named after early settlers that thought the chugging sounds of hot springs along the Yampa River sounded like a steamboat. Just west of downtown is the oldest ski area in the country, Howison Hill, famous for skiing and jumping. Of the accessible steam in Steamboat, this little pond is one of my favorites. They tried to bottle this water under the name Miracle Water and use it to heal such ailments as bipolar disorder, but if you look at it, it's probably more likely to cause more ailments than it is to heal it, which is why I'm not gonna cannonball in it. 
Four-wheel drive in Colorado goes hand in hand. Part of the joy of driving in the mountains is to do it in a proper sports car. And what we've done is move it to the winter months with the C4S. And then getting here and seeing people's reaction to it was totally surprising. But we have captured steam. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn west, we're gonna punch into the snow, and we're gonna try to find desert and some ice. And all of that is to prove that you really can use this car as the single mission sports car for Colorado. The only problem is the low beams in the 996 just spill too much light vertically, which you can see here in these near white out conditions. Here on the western slope, the Colorado Rockies give way to the red rock canyons of the Colorado Plateau. The rock walls paint desert scenes more synonymous with Utah or Arizona, but we have a secret stash of them right here, the Colorado National Monument. It's the perfect spot to hunt for the element of earth if we can find it under all of this snow. Talked a bunch of shit. <laughs> Can we truly self extract? And is a broken cooling line just hemorrhaging the remainder of our precious cooling into the desert? The all wheel drive system of the 996 C4S is a passive viscous coupling system. It maintains 95% of torque to the rear wheels until they begin to spin. Once they do, it can send up to 40% of that torque to the front wheels. It differs from the Torsen or Haldex systems found in other all-wheel drive platforms and is essentially a rear-wheel drive car. That could present a challenge out here in this wet, greasy desert snow, but even with just a little bit of talent and some yak tracks, you can get yourself out of the worst situations. You see all the jeepers and the forerunners out four-wheeling. You go out the mud in the snow and you get stuck and then you get the satisfaction of digging yourself up out. You can have that same experience in your lowered fancy Porsche 911 with as many stories to tell. Look at these idiots out here. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it was too ambitious. I think we rode the fine line, and the, I love the element of survival. There were definitely times I was a little bit nervous, like this might turn into an epic, but we unstuck ourselves. Like, we proved the point. We, we got ourselves out. Every time I drive these roads in the winter, in our truck or anything else, I'm like, God, I wish I had a sports car. I wish I could exploit these roads. I wish I could have fun. And we're literally doing it with both. Nestled in a box canyon in the San Juan Mountains of Southern Colorado is a majestic little town. It's a place where rock walls reach to the sky above historic buildings. Back in its mining heyday, it was famous for having more mules than people. Now it's famous for something else. We're in Uray, Colorado, the southernmost point of our loop around the Colorado Rockies, and we've come for the element of ice. What happens? is the ice cascades down these steep rock walls and there's just natural ice formations everywhere but in the ice park specifically it's really pretty but before we do that we're going to find the most important element of all which is chocolate i can't come here without bringing everybody's scrap cookies i'll get in big trouble if we come home empty-handed we didn't touch a ski resort we really tried not to touch i-70 we went north to Steamboat and found steam. We went west to the desert, and now we're here in the Ure Ice Park. We could bring everything that we would need to do all those various things. We fit it with no problem. And that's just another reason why this is great. 
<laughs> there's with the rear seats folded up there's so much room for duffel bags and gear bags and an air mattress and our food and water and a Carhartt onesie and a toolkit in the front and camera gear we'd fit all of that with room to spare and we never had to relinquish the driving experience we've literally reached the end of the road this is the million dollar highway it goes from Uray over to Silverton to Durango but because of the storm, it's closed. But what's important isn't that we can't keep going, it's what got us here. So from here, we're gonna head back home and this could be the most arduous leg of the journey because the storm's really filled in, it's getting dark, conditions are changing. Having the confidence that the C4S offers, the all-wheel drive, it's done great. It's never let us down. I think my favorite part about this has been pushing it a little bit. Like we went down some roads we probably shouldn't have and especially pretty far away where there was no cell signal or no people going by. And adding that little element of self-reliance, that like Western spirit of, we're gonna be all right, we'll take care of ourselves. Was that the smartest thing to take down there? No, but we made it work and we had a lot of fun on the way. And that's what I'm trying to prove. You don't need to sacrifice the joy of driving this to drive it here. This is an experience that we've had, so we're gonna remember. That's the point. Why spend your time in a normal four-wheel drive when you could do it in something like this? And guess what? They probably cost about the same amount. 